let's welcome the social media strategist and visual marketing expert, socially sorted, Donna Moritz.
So the shift, what has changed and what do we need to understand to create great visual storytelling? We really need to understand where our customers are at and how they're engaging with our brands and also how they uh, can create and consume content so that you're better able to assist them to, uh, to share content around your brand and around your story. So you hear a lot of terms about visual storytelling. It's become a really hot topic around the world with marketing. And it might be a little bit overused, but I think it's still a very relevant term and we really need to be good at it. And in fact, great marketing is really about great storytelling. So the way that we have, the way that we consume content has also changed. We go to, uh, we, we snap on stories throughout the day between Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat. We, we, we're doing 15 second snippets of stories and we're diving in and out of these stories and, and then stringing them together to make sense of them. So people aren't just jumping into big pieces of content as much as they used to. And Google, uh, oh, we also turn to our mobile devices uh, to, um, throughout the day to either search for something or to watch something or discover something or um, to buy something. And Google calls these micro moments. And they say that the brands that are successful or that will be successful are those that are able to meet and understand where consumers are in these micro moments. So you really need to work out how you can meet people with the content you're creating. How, you know, what platforms are they on? When are they on? And how are they engaging? And you need to be able to create content that suits the way that they're consuming it. And storytelling has changed. You know, we, as I said, we're jumping into stories and snippets throughout the day, and we're turning to our mobile devices for stories, and we're not necessarily watching stories on websites. We're going to news feeds to get our content. And people are turning to their friends for advice versus the marketing department. What we like, it might be easier, but it's not, it doesn't happen that way. Oops. And storytelling, I'm going back, storytelling builds Instagram. And, it's, and it, images create an emotional connection with us. They draw us in. Just like my image of the tea plantations in Munro, I forgot to mention that I did actually go to the conference last week and I did actually get to go and visit. And you just can't take a bad photo there. It was amazing. I was just blown away. So it really, it, you know, that one photo led me to have an amazing experience. And original visual content catches attention and stops the scroll. So we need to, you know, there's so much content. How are you going to catch attention? And it, there's an interesting stat, and it still stands, that on Pinterest, 80% of all content is shared content. So if you can be in the 20% that's creating content for the 80% to share, you're off rough and racing. And we're also 44% more likely to engage with visuals. So there's no denying that visual content uh, you know, creates a connection with us. And companies that create visuals have seven times a higher conversion rate. So even though we're all obsessed with video and all the different types of video at the moment, there's really a strong case for still creating a lot of visuals like just straight images and photos. So what sort of images do you create? Now that you've got this understanding of how storytelling has changed and what we can create, what do we create? I kind of look at it as a hierarchy. So you've got your, um, your level one kind of shareables. These are the easy to create, easy to share visuals that you see on Facebook and uh, Instagram. And it's about entertainment. People come to those platforms to be entertained, to catch up with their family and friends, not to be um, you know, marketed to by brands. So if you can get really good at quotes and tips and, and photos and gifs, or gifs as I say, I'm not going to get into the debate over how we say the name, <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's worth a while. Level two is the step by steps. Uh, this is like more teaching how to do something or helping people uh, rather than entertaining. It's things like how to's and checklists and, and tutorials. And then you can go up to your share of uh, showpieces which are more investment of time and money, but they also bring greater return in terms of traffic, hopefully, shares and sales. So these are your infographics, slideshows, slide decks, and video. And video has gone nuts. We've got 3D video, short video, long video, um, virtual reality, uh, live video. There's so many different forms of videos, so it's really just what you choose and how you choose to do it. And animations is another one. So I did a blog post, uh, a few months ago about popular images. 
uh, using research by Shutterstock as far as sort of images have been used a lot in marketing and, and in the industry, and I related that to Instagram images and how they're being used on Instagram. And it was interesting the types of images that came up. I'll put the link up for a resource page with the link for this and all of the uh, brands and concepts I mentioned in here and any links that I mentioned, so you can check that out. But the images that were listed as the highest, obviously there was 3D photography and drone photography were very popular, all those new technologies. But the two that came up high that I think we need to take notice of, that nothing has really changed, is mobile photography. So those in the moment raw images that people are taking, it doesn't have to be perfect and, and really polished, which is important as a marketing industry to be aware of, that this kind of um, imagery is very, very popular. So Instagram, obviously. And daily stories. People want to hear about daily stories. So it's no surprise that Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat are really embracing the idea of telling daily stories. The others that came up that were popular were things like um, sort of unprocessed contextual images and also things like photojournalism. So people being in the moment uh, and capturing things as they happen. So there are five key elements to a piece of visual content that we'll share really well. And uh, if you can get three or four of these at least, then you, you have more chance of creating visuals that, that will uh, work. So the first is that it's original. Now this kind of makes sense, you know, if you're scrolling through something and you see something new, we're all over it like a hot piece of gossip. You know, if we haven't seen that video or that image before. The second is that it's relevant. Not all platforms are created equal. So you need to look at what works on that platform, how your audience are engaging, what type of content they're posting, and what they're sharing. Let's take a step back and look at what works. The third one is that it's timely. And you can do this in two ways. You can create content that is planned ahead around events or dates. And the second one is that you uh, respond to events or happenings in the world with, with very quick um, calls to act, you, you, you can mobilise very quickly. So it's important that you're able to create video, create images really quickly without needing to necessarily outsource or take the time to sort of hand it on to another team. And also that they're optimised. So this is not just about the size or the content, but actually the call to action. What do you want people to do with that content? So do you want them to just like or comment? Or do you want them to click through or to share or to actually do something, sign up for something, uh, to, you know, participate in a competition, whatever it is. And lastly, that it's snackable. We mentioned people are, you know, snacking on content throughout the day. So if you can give them content that's easy to process, then, then uh, you're more likely to have success. Oops. So Mike Stelzner from Social Media Examiner, and it's a great uh, blog to follow if you want to get some good basic social media and, and digital marketing advice. He said this at his conference earlier in the year. He said it's more important than ever for marketers to know and learn how to create short, compelling videos. And he's right, you know, we're stitching these stories together, so if you can layer your stories like that, it's more likely that you're going to have success and engagement. I wanted to show you this, see how I go again, this video. There we go. So this is from Bupa, which is an insurance company in Australia. And it's an example of a really good uh, piece of content. They've made a GIF on Facebook, they've gamified it by asking you to click and then get some advice. Their whole pro uh, approach is that they want you to you know, be happy and healthy. So these are advices, advice to keep, get some happiness into your life. So it's snackable, it's relevant for the platform, uh, it's optimised because they're asking you to do something and uh, just trying to think what the other ones. Um, and you know, it's it's original. So that's a great little piece of content that's relevant to Facebook. And GIFs have actually become part of our cultural language. Just yesterday, Facebook announced, it, well, just released, that we can do post GIFs in comments. So everybody's currently going crazy with them. Hopefully, it will settle down because they can be a bit distracting. But we we can say so much with a visual without any words. And sometimes this has a better. It, it works better than actually using words. Now, I actually did prepare this before um, we had the presentation this morning, and uh, I just love Paperboat. I uh, connect so much with 
with their story and their marketing. And uh, I'm really glad that we've seen the video this morning. <laughs> and uh, you've seen you've seen just how powerful it is. The first time I watched that video, I was uh, I did not understand a word of it, and I have, did not grow up around Indian railways, obviously. And um, I just was so emotional at the end of it. I thought, how can this video that has nothing really in common with me have you know touched my heartstrings? And it was the nostalgia. It was going back in time and thinking about your childhood. It was just that idea. So when a video can have that much power with somebody who doesn't actually have that connection, uh, it's just very, very powerful. So I went on a bit of a vortex, <laughs> and down a vortex of paperwork, and I watched this video. We didn't see this this morning, I don't think, but it's um, a really great animation. It's Disney quality. I was very, very impressed with that. And uh, I, you know, I, I went further and looked at their Instagram account, and obviously they have a budget for doing uh, short video and animations. They've got some really cool animations. But I want to just highlight the fact that even though they're doing these big budget videos, for those of you that are smaller businesses in the room, this whole idea of tapping into memories, um, they're using a range of different content types. And so they've done these little short, raw videos, like this one. This is uh, two kids playing book cricket. I turned off the sound. They're playing book cricket. And, uh, you know, that's who's played book cricket in this room? Okay. <laughs> So it's an Indian uh, game where you, um, you know, you score based on where you flip the book to and what the number, the last number on the page is. And uh, this kind of raw, real video is easy to do on an iPhone. You know, so they're doing these high-budget productions, but also these kinds of videos, which work really well on Instagram and Facebook, and they tick all the boxes as far as the different criteria and the keys that I said before. So uh, I actually googled book cricket. <laughs> I played backyard cricket. I did play a lot of it as a child. Uh, but I googled book cricket. This is what Australia gave me. Books on cricket. <laughs> but I did find a, a link eventually. I looked up book cricket India and uh, found out yeah, there's a whole Wikipedia site on uh, what book cricket is. And I said to my husband, have you played book cricket? Is that what's book cricket? And, he, and I explained it to him. He said, oh, no, we use the dice. We roll the dice and there were rules for batsmen and fielders and you know, I was like, oh, I obviously missed that whole thing. We just went out the back. <laughs> but what they're doing at Paperboat Drinks is unlocking emotion. You know, and if you can tap into emotion in any way, it doesn't have to be about childhood memories. It can be just an image that uh, has some meaning to someone. So visual content, you know, in the case of me wanting to come to India, it can be very, very powerful. Apu Gupta from the tool, it's a, a tool company called Curalate, and they, they have a, a visual marketing tool that's it's enterprise level, it's quite expensive, but it's a very, very, uh, very, very impressive piece of software. Uh, but they, he said this, he said, the, the holy grail for a marketer is not a transactional relationship, but an emotional relationship with the consumer. And that's what Paper Boat Drinks is doing. And if you have an emotional relationship with the consumer, they will tolerate your faults and they will stick around for longer and they will um, buy your products and, and repeat to buy your products, come back to buy more. So it's really, really important. I just want to show you this video of Trails of India. Okay, so this is just another example of really uh, thinking about the platform you're on and using content appropriately. So obviously this is about riding motorbikes. I believe this is re referring to Northern India. Uh, and um, they have used the slide share function on Instagram. So making sure, I'm using it for tips. So just adding in a whole multiple series of images. So it's relevant, it's optimized, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's snackable, and it's really, catering to the audience that they have on Instagram. And so that's a great uh, tool that you can use on Instagram. I'll be talking about tools in my workshop, but it's a great way to sort of get more content in instead of just one image on Instagram. Okay, so another example here is uh, Bajaj, I believe that's how you say it, Electricals. And they do a lot of really interesting content that's snackable and um, very engaging, so lots of tips for how to you know, use their products to live a happy life. I love the strawberry hulling down the bottom. Um, and they, they use timely content, so they plan ahead 
to uh, you know, put up posts about how to create organic powders for the Holy Festival. I'd like to do that, it's like loads of fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, another great example of content done well. I just want to show you this one. These are examples from Instagram stories of different brands. Instagram stories. So uh, San Diego, Tourism San Diego collect stories from their fans and they post them up in a fan Friday um, and just highlighting them and tagging them. Uh, so that's a great way to get some music generated content going. GoPro uh, use Instagram stories to show tips. So obviously we're not all maybe into skydiving but but their audience is. So they're adding, they're using some of the features of Instagram stories to layer little bits of text and stickers and, and they're tagging people and adding locations. Um, I've turned the sound down on this, but he's calling out to his mum saying, sorry, mum. Uh, and, then, and then they're actually giving a call to action at the end. So it covers a lot of the bases with images as well, or effective visual content. And Box do some really great Instagram stories. This is a short, Stop motion, um, stop motion clip. They've obviously put a bit more uh, creative into this, but it's a really effective one. They're just showing how to use their product in a fun way, and at the end they finish with a call to action to swipe up for more. Now, I will. I was. I'm going to talk about this more in my workshop, but you, if you have a, a verified account on Twitter, you're able to do the swipe up call to action. But as of a couple of weeks ago, they've opened it up to anyone with over 10,000 fans. So if you guys didn't realise it, and you have more than 10,000 fans, you can actually add a link now in your Instagram stories. And finally, how do we amplify? How do we amplify our content? And this is all about user-generated content. It's about going beyond the stories that you create and realising that the stories that your audience creates about the brand can be even more powerful. So I really love this quote, and this is from 15, almost 15 years ago, that the only path to profit, profitable growth may lie in a company's ability to get its loyal customers to, in effect, become its marketing partner. Now, nothing has really changed, right? Um, and that's where the real power comes in user-generated content. And consumers or customers are our best marketers. Nothing has changed with that. It's always been that way, word of mouth. So one of the best ways to do this is with stories. And uh, we've got some amazing storytellers in this room, but I hate to say, no matter how good any of us are, we will never be as good or as prolific with stories as our audience. So we need to think about how we can go beyond just what we create and think about how we can really enable and empower people to take our story and tell it in their own way. And then you can flip around the back end of that and help them to you know, amplify that. So you give them a little nudge and then help them to share it. So this involves, sorry, um, this involves essentially providing them with the platform, like you, they would find you and know about you on different platforms, um, and giving them an idea or, or a hashtag or something around which they can share stories, and then empowering those customer stories and then, like I said, amplifying them. So a great example of this was a campaign that uh, Kerala Tourism did at the end of last year. They set up these booths in the airports around India and really going to the domestic market and just saying, hey, come and check out what it's like to ride on the backwaters in Kerala in one of these houseboats. So people put on a virtual reality headset and they basically were experiencing it from within an airport. And the results are amazing. People were saying how amazing it was and that it felt like they were there and then they were rushing off to book holidays. A lot of people actually considered to go to Kerala that never might have put it on their bucket list. And it's really a great example of how to give them a platform, like here's the boat, here's their VR experience, here's your headset, um, have a go, and then, oh look, you can tweet it out on Twitter and then we will share it as well. So it's about empowering them. Tourism Australia really wrote the book on um, user-generated content uh, and did some amazing things a few years ago. I'm a little bit biased. I'm sure Jeff is as well. But they basically turned their Facebook page and their Instagram account over to their fans and said, tell your stories about Australia and we'll share it. That's their marketing plan. It was very simple. And a lot of the, um, destinations have since done the same thing. 
but they are now the biggest destination page in the world. They get thousands of photos and videos sent in every day. They never have to create a piece of content. It's all under the Sea Australia hashtag. And they've done other, account, uh, other campaigns like Restaurant Australia where they really pro um, promoted Australia as one very large restaurant and that increased our, uh, our restaurant industry by about $1 billion during that campaign as well. Airbnb is another great example of using user-generated content. And they have a very community-driven Instagram account. So go and check it out. They basically look for stories from their fans and then they share them. And they say that their fans are, um, all their fans are uh, influencers. Whether they have 300 followers or 3 million, they want to hear their stories. And their social media, uh, head of social media, Eric Toda, said that it's our job to listen, understand why they travel, and then to tell, or understand why you travel and then tell your story back to the audience that's following us. And they do this in two ways. They, they, they do this by finding the right stories and asking the right questions. So when they find the right stories, they're going to, they're, they're searching under hashtags where people are posting under Airbnb and then they're reaching out to those people on the, on just on Instagram itself and asking for permission to share. Uh, there are tools you can use, I'm talking about one in my workshop, but at the very least you can just make a quick little note, you know, are you okay with us sharing this on our Instagram account? And then what they do is instead of stopping right there, they go one step further and they go to direct messaging. And they ask three questions. They ask, why do you travel? Where did you stay? And what did you find? And it's the what did you find that gives them some great content to then match with the stories. So they're creating their own story about that person and their holiday. And they, they get responses like, I found a location I never knew existed. I found my wife. I found that my culture is not that different to here. I found an amazing food, whatever it is. And then they, they have this conversation with their audience. And it might seem like a lot of work, but they have a team doing this 24 seven in three locations around the world. Because when they looked at the data, their user-generated content was a huge part of the success of Airbnb. So why not tell those stories? So there's really four ways, four aspects to creating content that uh, is easily shared and amplified. The first is to have a hashtag or some way of, um, of, I guess, of bringing that conversation together between your, your business or your brand or your agency and your community. The second is to have Wi-Fi. Uh, India does this pretty well. It's a shame to say it's probably better than Australia. Uh, but giving people Wi-Fi, especially when they're travelling, if they're not a domestic person with a, with a phone and data account and they're coming from overseas, it's a huge help to be able to post. We had Wi-Fi at all the hotels I went on on the tour last, last week and we posted a lot of content for the places we were staying. The third thing is to have it uh, you know, mobile and in the moment. So someone can easily post about their experience while they're in it. Because we're never more uh, ready or able to post about an experience than when we're there. When we get home, it's not the same and you forget and you've got a thousand digital photos that you don't do anything with. So when we're in the moment, that's when we put the post. And the last is heart. And I can just say, you know, paper boat drinks is a great example of heart. It's having a meaning or purpose or some sort of emotion or memory that makes people want to drink. <laughs> Post. Sorry. Oh, maybe I need a drink. <laughs> yes, but it makes them want to post. That's an interesting quote. Um, the next, and, and then, so really, from that, my question to you is to uh, really think about how can you encourage fans and customers, um, you know, and followers to share in the moment and thinking about those four factors that you can bring into it. So, Obviously, when you've got a lot of these concepts, you know, it's the tools, how do we create? And I really want you to, I want to encourage you to take advantage. There's loads of tools available uh, that you can use. And we've never had such, a, such an amazing uh, array of tools that we can, we can tap into and that'll make it so easy for us to create content. And, uh, you know, especially with short video and images, if you can mobilise your team, um, even within a business where you might outsource, outsource some of your content, but be able to just create quick videos like the paper boat or the cricket video. You don't need to outsource that sort of thing. Um, and even within an agency, working with your clients 
to help them to create the content that then helps you to create great, great, um, great creative. So, you know, I'll be talking in my workshop about tools uh, for things like short video, animated visuals, Instagram stories. Uh, obviously, that relates also, you can use it for Facebook stories and Snapchat. Uh, user generated content, and uh, yes, that's all the things I'll be covering. So, I just wanted to finish with this slide from Instagram. Uh, they had a few people ask about the algorithm getting upset that, you know, not that all their content was getting seen. So, they replied with this they said, the three things you need to do is have a distinct visual presence, create quality content, and uh, you know, really put some effort into it. You don't need to post a lot of the time. You know, just posting once or twice a day, quality visuals or video. Uh, the sec second thing is to be a storyteller. And I'm, we've got a lot of storytellers in the room, so that's good, tick. And thirdly, put thought into your creative. And hopefully, people in this room usually put thought into their creative. <laughs> but they're saying, you know, you just put some heart into it. You know, put as much effort into the posts that you put up as you would to your business. And lastly, I just encourage you to think beyond your marketing team as far as who can create stories and be great with your storytellers. It's not just your marketers, it's your sales team, it's your employees, it's your staff, it's your community. And uh, just remember that everyone with a mobile phone in their pocket or in their hand is on, their, on your marketing team. And these guys I'm hoping is on, are on your marketing team and they're not just watching cricket. Okay. Thank you very much. That is all I have to share with you today. Oh, and so the link on here, sociallysorted.com.au forward slash uh, Idma is uh, where I've put all the links for you to check out. And hopefully I'll see some of you at the workshop. Thanks. Absolutely, Donna. I must say we're almost socially sorted. We'll be fully <laughs> sorted <laughs> after your workshop post lunch. Thank you so much, Donna. I'm going to invite Mr. Nitin Gupta, CEO of Zapax, to kindly present our token of gratitude to Donna. And I'm going to take a selfie. Sure, so. go ahead. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, everybody. Hands in the air. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, can we hear once again for Donna Lewis, Donna Sears, and the workshop. All right, so before we break for lunch, very quickly, we have the winner of the second Circa Digital Contest, who is Krinan. Krinan with the handle Cryptic Cookie. Very interesting. Cryptic Cookie, Krinan, your gift is with me. If you're in the room, please come and collect it. And before I let you go, I'm going to announce the third question of the contest, ladies and gentlemen, which is, when was Bing launched? Simple one, I guess. Your options are 2009, 2005, and 2014. Once again, when was Bing launched? Is it 2009, 2005, or 2014? Do tweet the correct answer using handle Zirka Digital and hashtag E4MIDMA. With that, we're going to break for lunch. It's going to be a 30-minute lunch break, ladies and gentlemen. And very importantly, post-lunch, we're going to have two parallel workshops. Zoe Cairns workshop, which will be held in this hall, which would be about influencer marketing strategies. And Donna Moritz, who's going to deep dive into visual storytelling. Do take your pick and move to the halls accordingly. Also, very importantly, VIP tag holders. Your lunch is going to be held at the Imperial Hall, which is at the first level. That's for VIP tag holders. And the rest of us can kindly present our coupons outside for lunch. Do explore the experiential stalls that we have outside, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to see you back in the room in 30 minutes from now. Thank you and bon appetit.